in the form of inquiry. So types of audit procedures. Um, the types of audit procedures you're going to basically, the standard audit procedures, is inspection of records and documents. The client's records, docu uh, client's records or external documents or internal documents when you're testing internal controls, for example. And normally you see the terms vouching, tracing, and scanning. You vouch documents. You trace. You select a sample of shipping documents. Trace those back to the sales journal. You select a sample of sales from the sales journal. Vouch those back to shipping documents. Tracing, vouching, and scanning. Inspect inspection of documents. Inspection of tangible assets, such as inventory, such as fixed assets, such as cash, right? Um, you, or, or, um, or if, if the client has on its site, uh, you know, uh, stocks and bonds, things of that, can inspect those things. Observation, right, by observing the physical inventory count. The client performs, a, it's the client's responsibility to perform inventory counts, right? An auditor can observe those inventory counts, and then they can also do test, uh, test the inventory count that the client is doing. Uh, inquiry, there's no audit that you're not going to inquire. There's certain information that you're not going to produce um, necessarily a, a document. Not all, not all of your audit procedures involve documents that, that you can actually touch and feel, right? You inquire, so think about the one procedure we talked about earlier when we were talking about the credit manager. Inquire, discuss with the credit manager the collectability of accounts receivable. That's a discussion, right? Where you document the, the credit manager's rationale, you document all of the accounts receivable you discuss and the outcome of that discussion and then your conclusion based on that discussion. That's inquiry, right? You haven't, there's no documentation necessarily to support it. It's your discussion with that person in management who's knowledgeable about the account and the transactions. Uh, confirmation is just as it, as it says, you confirm account balances, such as accounts receivable, such as cash. And in some cases, you might even confirm liabilities with a third party. So you're seeking uh, confirmation of those uh, transactions or accounts, right, with uh, the third party. Recalculation is just as, except, you know, management calculates something, you go in and recalculate it. Same thing. Reperformance, perf reperforming a procedure that, so for example, uh, with um, internal controls. If you're testing internal controls, um, you actually perform the steps necessary uh, to support the, you know, the account balance. So for example, or the transaction, if management is supposed when um, a customer makes a sale, if it's supposed to go through these three steps, you as an auditor will reperform that process to ensure that that transaction is, is act, that those controls are, are operating as management explained them to be. And then we talked a bit about analytical procedures in the planning stage. And analytical procedures are basically ratio analysis, looking at year one to year two, comparing it, you know, looking at relationships and accounts. Two things that I want to say about, uh, two points I want to make about uh, analytical procedures. Analytical procedures are performed, uh, can be performed throughout the phases of an audit. So it can be performed during the planning stage, uh, during the evidence collection phase, and, through, and during the completion phase. The standards require analytical procedures to be performed during planning and completion. It is optional to the auditor if they perform it as a means of evidence gathering during the testing phase. The objective of analytical procedures during the planning phase is attention directing, right? It's, a, it's because remember, at the planning stage, the auditor is going through their risk assessments, they're trying to identify where there are possibilities of misstatements. Where is there a higher likelihood of misstatements? What accounts? So for example, if the auditor is looking at, uh, I'll use this one again, sales and collection and the accounts associated with the sales and collection cycle, and they notice that sales are going down, 
however accounts receivable is going up. That's not the right relationship. That relationship doesn't make sense. So the, this is during the planning phase. So the auditor's attention is directed to the fact that there might be a collectability of problem with accounts receivable. So that they know in designing their audit procedures that a, the uh, allowance for doubtful accounts or collectability of accounts receivable is a higher risk account. Right? So they're going to develop their audit procedures around that to, to, to focus on the uh, collection of accounts receivable. So analytical procedures are attention directed in doing the planning phase. And if you think about it, you don't know anything. The analytical procedures can only say there's a problem or there is no problem. These accounts look good. The relationships are going in my expected direction. That's all they can tell you, right? And then during the completion phase, analytical procedures are also required. And that's again to kind of like a hindsight. Let's, now I have a lot more information because I planned the audit, I've carried out the audit, I've collected evidence. Now I want to see does it all make sense? Does it pass the smell test? Do I feel as though I have gathered sufficient, appropriate evidence to support my opinion? After I've gathered all this evidence, is there anything that stands out that just does, doesn't make sense? Right? So in the completion phase, it's sort of like a hindsight check. Let's kind of take take a step back and look at what we have and does it make sense. Okay, so only required during those two phases of the audit, um, but can be performed during the evidence collection 